I think it's safe to say that the Payday Gang has fought a lot of powerful opponents. Cloakers, bulldozers, turrets, your mom. All of those fall short compared to the opponent they are facing in this hypothetical. If you're watching this video, then you read the title, or you fell asleep and this is autoplay. But if you're awake, then it's time to ask the question of the hour. What if Spider-Man fought the Payday Gang? Disclaimer, I like all of these characters, and this is just a hypothetical of what would happen if they had to face off with each other. So, seeing as that Spider-Man is the one that with the game that has come out, let's start with him. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm only going to be sticking with Peter Parker. He's the original Spider-Man and the one I'm most familiar with. We're also going to be only examining him from the recent PlayStation games, for the sake of fair comparison with the gang. Peter from 616 has done far more crazy shit than the likes of the Peta gang, including having the Infinity Gauntlet at one point, and a bunch of other crazy shit. Now, let's not kid ourselves here. You know Spider-Man's powers, but for the sake of fairness, let's cover them. After receiving his spider bite, Peter was given super strength and is consistently able to pick up and stop moving cars, not to mention that in the comics and movies, he's been able to lift significantly heavier objects. Along with strength, Peter was given enhanced reflexes and reaction time, which goes hand in hand with spider sense, which allows the webhead to detect danger within the immediate area. The ability to climb up walls and ceilings, you know, like a spider. But even before the spider bite, Peter was already on track to become one of the smartest people in the Marvel Universe, having a genius intellect at the age of 15, making a variety of spider-themed gadgets to assist him in his pursuit against crime. The most famous of these is, of course, the web shooters, which allow him to create synthetic webs which last for six hours and can be used for a variety of purposes, most often used for transportation via swinging, but in combat, he is able to use them as long-range attacks, creating web pellets that can be fired from afar. Web ropes, which can be used to grab and throw objects and enemies alike. Not to mention that the web shooters can be used to just tie up and neutralize opponents where they stand, webbing them to walls, floors, ceilings, any other fixture that can support a grown man's weight. But along with the many uses of the web shooters, Spider-Man also has many other gadgets he created over his career the web bomb, which is an AoE attack, which webs up nearby opponents, the impact webbing, which can be fired from afar, but with the shots being more condensed, pushing targets away, the spider drone, which can act as another asset in a fight, drawing attention away from Spider-Man himself, and doing minor damage, electric webs, which act as a spider-themed taser, the trip mine, which can be deployed onto surfaces and webs nearby enemies to walls, the concussive blast, which sends enemies flying back, and lastly, the suspension matrix, which defies the laws of physics by creating a field of zero gravity in the immediate area, sending anyone in the vicinity into the air. A fair amount of gadgets for a guy who's been living in borderline poverty for most of his life. But along with gadgets, Insomniac Spider-Man also comes with suit powers and perks. Most alternate suits come with a specific power that comes with them, so let's list the ones that I think would be the most useful when fighting the Payday Gang. Battle Focus from the Advanced Suit, Rapidly generates focus over a short time. Web Blossom from the classic suit. Sends webs everywhere. It's kind of OP. Hollow Decoy from the Scarlet Spider suit. Spawns holograms that stun enemies when attacking. Bulletproof from the Spider Armor Mark II. 100% bulletproof for a short time. Arms Race from Secret Wars 2. Disables all weapons in the area. Spider Bro from the Stark suit, which shoots out a drone which can help in combat like the Spider Drone. The Negative Shockwave from the Negative suit. Electric Punch from the Insulated Suit, basically the shot gloves from Arkham Origins. Rock Out from Spider Punk, makes a big sound wave. Quad Damage from the Fear Itself Suit, does what it says on the tin. The Blur Projector from the Big Time Suit, makes a dome that makes you invisible to non-alerted enemies. Titanium Alloy Plates from the Spider Armor Mark III, sends all bullets back to their shooters. Low Gravity from Spider-Man 2099, <laughs> gives you more airtime. Iron Arms from the Iron Spider Suit, the Defense Shield from Spider Armor Mark IV makes you invincible for a short time, Spirit Fire from the Spirit Spider gives you a blue, gives you blue Ghost Rider fire, Concussion Strike from the 2099 White Suit sends enemies flying when you hit them, Unrelenting Fury from the Last Stand Suit, enemies can't block your attacks, Equalizer in the Undies makes you one hit but gives you one HP in return, Lastly, we have Resupply from the Anti-Ox Suit, refills current gadget slots. 
Now, there are two dozen suit mods that are available, but seeing as that half of them work entirely around focus, XP, or damage, I'll just stick to the most relevant ones for this video. Gel padding decreases the damage of melee attacks, ballistic inserts reduce the damage of incoming bullet attacks, reactive lenses reduce the amount of time flashbangs work, charged outer mesh shocks enemies who touch it while charged, metabolic converter gives a chance to refresh the gadget upon taking damage, blast place reduces the explosion damage, ferromagnetic harness reduces the time electric attacks are effective, and storm bolt discharger builds up a charge when doing air attacks, and lets it loose on enemies on the ground. Now, in game you can swap out most of these abilities on the fly, but for the video we'll just stick to what Spider-Man would typically use on a normal day, wearing the advanced suit. Seeing as that Spider-Man usually goes with very light setup for the sake of speed, we'll go with Web Blossom for the power, after all in canon he used it for years, and with suit mods we'll go with gel padding for melee hits and ballistic inserts for low caliber rounds. And although we could go with blast plates to round off the armor mods, in practice, they may be too heavy to be worn on the daily, based on their description, and we'll be using them later for a different build to take on the gang. So for this first outing, we'll go with Web Striker to round off the gadget use. I chose this setup for this fight because most abilities rely on multiple opponents to be effective, and these just seem like the kind of perks that would be in the advanced suit that Peter wears for most of the game. At least to me. But seeing what he's up against, he may need more than that to take them down. <laughs> The Payday Gang has had quite a few members over the years, but for this first scenario, and for fairness with my Batman video, which can be found in the description, I'll just be sticking to the core four. Dallas, Hoxton, Chains, and Wolf. I went more in depth on how they are usually prepared for a bank hit in the Batman video, but I'll quickly sum up their roles here as well. Dallas, mastermind and crew chief, is the field leader of the gang and calls the shots when Bane isn't around, favors automatic weapons, and tends to bring medic bags. Hoxton is a rowdy sharpshooter and bare-knuckle boxer who's perfectly fine being far away with a sniper rifle and up close and personal with his bare hands. Given his history with them and pay to the heist, we'll give him shaped charge mines. Chains is the muscle of the group, bringing in heavy weapons and enough ammo to keep them running. Being an ex-Navy SEAL, Chains is fully trained in battlefield medicine, triage, and hand-to-hand -hand combat. We'll set him up with an LMG for this fight. Wolf is a psychotic nutcase wrapped in a box of violence and topped with a drill. He's the gang's technician, and usually takes charge when it comes to operating any device the gang has rigged to open up the door to anything the gang's after. Money, gold, the blood of federal officers. We'll set him up with a shotgun, which at this point is his signature weapon. Now, just because I gave the gang these guns doesn't mean in different scenarios they can't use others. These are adaptable career criminals who have used every gun under the sun over the course of a very profitable career. But with that being said, I am excluding two weapons from this fight altogether. The Cash Blaster and the Musket, for two reasons. Number one, these are anniversary weapons that are not a part of the regular gameplay loop. And number two, if the gang had these, they'd win any fight in one shot. Getting into skills and perks, it only makes sense to give them skills that best fit their weapons. Surefire for the rifles, and overkill for the shotgun. Perk deck wise for this fight, we'll just stick to their character associated decks, meaning Dallas gets crew chief, Hawks gets crook, Chains gets muscle, and Wolf gets armor. Now, as for a location, seeing that Payday 3 is entirely set in New York, I think the best setting for this fight would be the Golden Shark Bank. It's a large, spacious arena with a clear, defined objective and escape routes. Now, despite me putting emphasis on Payday 3, I'm still going to let the gang have their abilities and weapons from Payday 2. Payday 3 is a much more subdued, grounded take on the abilities that the gang had from 2, so to give them the best fighting chance, I'm going to let them keep it that way. Now, when it comes to win conditions for this fight, it's simple. For Spider-Man, subdue the Payday gang, and for the clowns, kill Spider-Man. Which, when it comes to how easy it is to wound Spider-Man, it's not impossible at all. Spider-Man may be fast, but he's not bulletproof. Spider-Man relies on his speed and powers to take down opponents, not that by any means he's a glass cannon. He's durable, but he's not bulletproof, even with the minor protection the advanced suit could offer. Now, when it comes to the gang, they really don't have anything that could counter Spider-Man's abilities. The number one strategy would be to stay out of melee range of Spider-Man, however, given his speed and web zip, I don't think that will last long. But that's not to say that the gang won't be left high and dry. In my previous Versus video, I had the gang fight Batman. 
I said even if the heist went loud, there wouldn't be any cops inside the bank. But in the case of Spider-Man, I think it would be the opposite. Spider-Man has always had a much more rocky relationship with the police than Batman has ever had. So I would say if Spider-Man were to show up to an active robbery, it wouldn't be in coordination with the police. He would help protect them, but the cops wouldn't be relying on Spider-Man. This, however, is good news for the gang, seeing that most of their powerful skills require kills to activate, such as overkill and bloodlust. But I can hear some of you in the comments saying, but what if they did the heist in stealth? Then Spider-Man never shows up. Well, on paper, yes, but in Spider-Man 2018, he had a system where he still was able to pick up on buildings' silent alarms, and seeing as that in Follow the Money, we never see the gang set off an alarm, but the cops show up anyway. At least I think they're cops. I can believe that Spider-Man can show up as well. After all, it was a golden shark bank that the gang hit in that video also. However, with their usual setups for a heist, there's very little that the gang could do to counter Spider-Man's natural abilities. However, if Spider-Man attempts to approach the gang in stealth, he would be detected the second he attempts to take down a heister, and that's because of one reason. Bane. During every single heist the Payday Gang has ever pulled, they have had a handler in their ear calling out important information for them, including if a heister is down. First Bane, then Locke, and now Shade. So if Spider-Man webs up a clown, their handler would immediately let everyone else know. That's why I didn't include the Sound of Silence ability in this video, but that's not to say they would even be able to help their teammate if they got to him. If Spider-Man gets the chance to web up his enemies, unless they have super strength or they're not fully webbed up, they're not getting out. Spider-Man's webs are as strong as steel, and despite the heavy shit the clowns carry, they're not strong enough to get out of that. So if anything, this will turn into a fistfight with Spider-Man pretty quick. Spider-Man may not hit as hard as other heroes like Batman, but that's out of sheer restraint. Spider-Man pulls his punches because if he doesn't, his fists will go through someone's head. So, I'm just gonna lay it out there and say that with the core four with their usual loadouts, Spider-Man takes the win. But, I want to take a moment here, real quick, to set up a scenario where the gang and Spider-Man are fully prepared for each other. For this setup, the Payday Gang will be comprised of Jacket, John Wick, Jimmy, and Chains. Each one of them has proven in their own franchises, let alone Payday, that they are masters of death. Yet, I'll go a step further and give them perk decks that I believe would be useful in a fight with New York's webhead, such as Rogue for dodging incoming webs, Leech to self-revive or get back in the fight, and Stoic to top off lost health, along with giving them skills like Bulletstorm for infinite ammo, Counter-Strike Ace for melee hits, and Inspired Ace for getting each man back in the fight, with a healthy amount of crits and body expertise thrown in there for good luck. Not to mention the variety of machine guns, grenade launchers, and RPGs that the gang has at their disposal. Now, with everything I just listed off, you think that it would be a slam dunk for the Payday Gang. However, Spider-Man still has one ace in the hole. The Spider Armors. Using any one of them, or the suit powers they have, would be a living nightmare for the clowns. John Wick opens fire, Spider-Man becomes bulletproof and web zips right to him. Chains launches rockets, Spider-Man webs them up right back at him, or becomes invincible and beats him down. Jacket tries to use Counter-Strike Ace in a fist fight with Spider-Man, He's never able to land a hit on him while Spider-Man webs him to the wall since he stopped shooting. Jimmy takes a shot at the spider in a coke-fueled rage. Spider-Man does a perfect dodge and one-shots him. Not to mention that even if the gang uses dodge builds, AoE and non-projectile attacks like the web bomb, trip mine, concussive blast, and suspension matrix would still be effective. Not to mention that dodge builds don't block melee hits, along with building up focus to one-shot them more field mid-fight. And I'm not even going to touch on the black suit. I don't know what to say. Spider-Man has faced far stronger opponents than the Payday Gang and has come out on top. Anything they throw at him literally and metaphorically will just end up going right back in their face. But that's not to say that a fight with the clowns wouldn't be tough. I think that the clowns could escape Spider-Man or avoid him for a while, but that's for another video. If you can come up with a scenario where the gang can more clearly defeat Spider-Man, go ahead and let me know in the comments, and I'll pin my favorites. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and a comment. And if you want more from me, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications on new videos. That's all I got for now. See you guys.